Thank you for coming. Uh, what we'll do now is to review chest compressions in a neonate. And um, if you think about neonatal resuscitation, you usually start off with airway and breathing. And at some point during um, your assessment of the child, you'll take a heart rate, um, palp either by auscultating or by palpating the umbilical cord. Okay. And if the heart rate is low at that point, uh, meaning less than 60 um, uh, beats per minute, um, you wouldn't necessarily jump to doing chest compressions just yet. You wanna make sure you establish effective ventilation first for at least a good 30 seconds before going on to chest compressions. Supporting that could bring the heart rate up on its own. Correct, okay. yeah, so um, the majority of babies, if they're breathing and they have good chest rise, then the heart rate should naturally come up on, on its own. And then, and then in a subset of babies, um, potentially they might need more circulatory type of um, uh, support. And so in those kids, uh, um, then you would provide chest compressions. So after 30 seconds of effective ventilation. Okay. okay. Um, any questions about that before we move on? No, mm -hmm. okay. Great, so uh, what I would like to do is show you uh, the landmarks on and where you would place your fingers, your hands on a baby. So when you're in, in the field, uh, it, be, uh, pay attention to what kind of surface you're on because right now we're on a table and it's nice and hard so you wouldn't necessarily need a backboard. Uh, but potentially if you're going into um, somebody's home and the mom is delivering on a soft bed, then you need to, uh, just like in adults and older kids, you wanna make sure that when you're giving compressions that you're giving it against a firm surface, okay? okay. Um, the, there are two techniques for giving chest compressions. Um, the preferred technique is called the two thumb technique, where you encircle your fingers around the back of the baby. And um, this technique is preferred and nice because of two reasons. One, your fingers in the back uh, serves as a backboard. So, so even if you're on a soft surface, then you will be able to compress with enough depth with your, uh, with your thumbs. Okay. And the other reason why this uh, technique is preferred is because your thumbs are a lot stronger than, um, than with the other technique, you're using two fingers instead of two thumbs. Makes your sense. thumbs just have a lot more power to them, okay? So if we're thinking about doing the two thumb technique, what you wanna do is assess the baby's landmarks, look for the, the nipples, uh, connect an imaginary line to it, look for the xiphoid process, and your thumbs um, are going to be uh, positioned somewhere between the xiphoid and your nipple line, okay? Yeah. Uh, not on the xiphoid because you could break your xiphoid process, right. and not above because you, wanna, you want to direct your um, fingers over the, the heart. Uh, so, so here's your nipple line, here's your xiphoid, I'm gonna put my thumbs right here. And, um, and it's very Im important uh, to make sure that your fingers are not too spread apart. You don't want them on the ribs, you want them on the sternum. And so either they could be side by side or one above the other. Um, I generally like them side by side because otherwise you're putting a lot of pressure on one, one of your thumbs as you're doing compressions, okay? And then your other fingers, like I had mentioned before, um, go around the back. So then you start compressions and you're going to provide it. It's usually coordinated. Well, I'll show it to you uncoordinated. Uh, coordinated with breaths when I say coordinated. So one and two and three, but faster than that. One and two and three, somebody's gonna breathe. One and two and three, breathe. One and two and three, breathe. One and two and three, breathe. And the depth should be about one third of your anterior posterior diameter of the chest. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so that is the two thumb technique and the two finger technique, same landmarks, nipple line, xiphoid process, somewhere in between. And this time, you're gonna press with your two fingers. So a lot harder, you can see me down try. One and two and three, breathe. One and two and three, breathe. If you're on a soft surface, then you could put the other hand behind the back to act as a backboard and then provide compressions that way. One and two and three, breathe. One and two and three, breathe. Okay. Um, so. Definitely the circling seems the, the yeah. better one to do. Yeah, my fingers are not that strong <laughs> <laughs> as, as I can demonstrate for you guys. So um, 
The other thing I should mention is that you would also want to keep in mind the rate. So I um, modeled that as one and two and three, breathe, one and two and three, breathe. So three compressions, one breath for each cycle should take about two seconds. Uh, you want to do about 90 compressions and 30 breaths uh, in a minute. Okay. And so it's really, really fast compared to adults and older kids. Um, and this is because when we're providing compressions, the best respiratory rate we'll be able to provide that baby is 30 breaths per minute, when uh, normally kids breathe about 40 to 60 times a minute. Okay. And so that's why it goes that fast. Sounds All good. All right. Ready to get your hands on the baby? Absolutely. So, so um, why don't uh, one of you bag and one of you do chest compressions and then okay. we'll switch off. Go ahead and do the bag. Sure. Are you ready? Yep. One and two and three. 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 I think great. I got it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great rate, great depth, uh, good coordination. And usually the person who's doing the compressions um, is doing the counting out loud, so that way you make sure uh, that you're coordinated. And the person who's bagging is making sure that you are coordinated. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay. Do you want to swap and maybe try the other sure. technique, the okay. two-finger technique? One and two and three. 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 That is perfect. Much harder. Yeah, I, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot harder uh, with the two finger technique. Um, so I should also mention that um, the reason why we have two different techniques is because um, uh, sometimes you might be in a situation where it's hard for somebody to completely encircle their hands around the baby uh, like this. Um, let's say if somebody was trying to access. Um, to put in an, an umbilical line or okay. something's going on Lucky in the options. bottom half of the baby. Um, so in those situations, um, what we re recommend is instead of standing this way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot on this side, is you're gonna turn and, and do it this way. However, if somebody's in the um, bagging the child, then you're, you're gonna be cozy teamwork. In, teamwork. In, in each other's space. So um, perhaps we should try that. Okay. Once at least. Um, so. All right, you ready? One and two and three. 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 Yeah, it's a it's a little bit more awkward, but it's not impossible, especially if you're if the person who's bagging can stand exactly like on the above the baby's head sure. or mm -hmm. on the other side. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome.